So now we come to the last section of this module, and that is iterators. It's all been building up to iterators. And this is a situation where you might say, wow, I don't like iterators. Iterators seem like a more complex way to write loops than just looking at like head and next and sneaking in and violating the abstraction boundary. But as you'll see in the overall next module, you're going to have to have very different underlying data structures, and we want to be able to write the same code over and over again. So at, at some level, what we're doing here is we're building a map implementation that can be a linked list, a hash map list, I mean a, a hash-based map, a list-based map, or a tree-based map. And what we want is this code right here. This code should not change. We should say, hey, give me a map. We got a map entry. We got a map iterator. Those are all part of the contract that we have with the object, be it a linked list, tree, or map, a hash. We're going to do a put, 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 dump, get, get. Now we're going to iterate. The hash won't even have like a, it doesn't have a head. And the next is not going to work, right? So we're going to have to say, hey, there's this abstraction. Give me an iterator for your map, OK? And I, we don't know what's in the iterator. We don't need to know what's in the iterator. The only thing we need to know is it has a method called next. That's it. So we're basically saying, let's get started. Give me an iterator from the map. Call the iterator method passing the map instance as a parameter and give me back iterator. And then we write a while loop and we say, hey, iterator, give me the next thing. It is up to the iterator to start at the beginning and then advance and move down. And when we get null, we break. If not, we print key and value from the cur. Now cur is of type map entry. There's a map iter, iter next, and then cur is what we get back from iterator. So we get from iter, iter next, we get back a map entry. And so if you recall, key and value are public in the map entry. So we we could I could have had you hide those behind sort of getters and have a get key and whatever and name those underscore. But we're just going to leave them public attributes for now. If we're really going to be the, if we were implementing Java, I mean, right now we're kind of hard coding this string key integer throughout, so it's going to be okay. And then, of course, we call the destructor on the iterator once we're kind of done with that loop, and then we call the destructor on the overall map. And this code should be roughly the same when we go from linked lists to hashes to trees. This is the moment, and it's this iteration pattern. So I'm going to do a bunch of pictures. And so I just want to, we've, I've been drawing some pretty complex pictures on these things, but by now the whole pattern of what next means and prev and these things being null, a doubly linked list, and the key pointing to another little, uh, you know, a char star key, which points to another little statically allocated thing, and the head points to the tail, and head and the tail, and all that stuff. I'm just going to, for this section, really simplify these pictures it's to say, look, there's a variable called head somewhere, and it points to a z equals 22, then it points to a w equals 42, and then that's the last one, and that points to the next there points to null. And so I'm going to really use a succinct representation of linked lists uh, going far forward. The, if we re review what we don't want to do, right, we do not want our calling code to know about count. We do not want it to know about head. We don't even want it to know about next within the entries, right? We don't want to know that. We do want it to know about key and value. And so the calling code where map arrow number underscore head, current underscore next, no, 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 that's not allowed, right? Those are private. So in our calling code, if we're, if we're looking at things have underscores, technically we could do it because there's nothing in C that's stopping us, right? We create those things, right? So we don't want to call head or count because then if we change when we're doing a map, head's not there anymore. I mean, a hash, head's not there. Next doesn't work. I mean, we got to hide that. we got to like 
wrap it. We got to create a strong abstraction around this notion of starting a loop and then iterating one iteration of a loop and then ending the loop. We have to abstract that away. This is the concept of separation of concerns. Our calling code does not need to be concerned about how the object can loop, be looped through, right? So we need a generic notion of looping. So you can think of the iterator object itself as a thing you create, and it sort of starts at the beginning, and then you hit it, boop. Next, give me another one, give me another one, give me another one. And inside the iterator, the state is changing. It's like advancing, and it just gives them to you one at a time. You can't ask it for the same one. Once it's been given to you, it's sort of like ratcheted down to the next one. So if we look at this Python code, we, uh, well, we start with a dictionary. A maps to 1, B to 2, C to 3, and we print it, and there's the dictionary, and we say, oh, let's convert that to a list. And that list is the keys, which is A, B, C, and then say, give me an iterator from that dictionary. We print that out, and we print the type of it. It is of type dict underscore key iterator object. And so the iterator itself is not the entire dictionary. It is not a list of all the keys. It is an internal structure that Python is going to maintain, and then we're going to poke it by calling next, next, next. Now, the whole next thing, that's probably calling an internal method like under, double underscore next, double underscore. So next is part, is, is, is part of the Python language. So if you look at the while loop, it's a while true loop. We say item equals next. So that means it, give me the next available item in the iterator, and then advance it, and if we're past the end, return me false. Then I say if item is false, break, and otherwise I print the item. And so I'm getting the item is A, B, and C. The, the key thing here in Python, just we're using Python to keep it as simple as possible, is we the, the, the iterator is something that's created. The iterator doesn't contain all the data. The iterator contains pointers inside of it so that it knows what, what to do next. And we repeatedly probe the iterator with the next call to get the next thing. And that both advances, returns, and indicates when we have run out of things. So it's weird because we're so used to say like for blah in blah or for this that, but that's that's not how iterators work. Iterators want this next thing to happen. In the C code to do the iterator, you create it, you loop next through, and the C one is going to look pretty much the same as the Python one. So if we look at the map iter structure, it is going to have the kind of things that we we needed. We just are going to pull them in. So the concept of current, like we've used the variable current in the past for these loops, is in the map iter structure, and it's private. So we've moved that from a sort of a variable that was in the main scope to inside this and made it private. The only public things we have are a next method and a del method. And so now what we have is a simple contract. You can see our, our kind of outside contract for this class is, it's, not cre it's created by the map class, but once it's constructed, next and del are the only thing that you can do with this, and that's that. And then we get to decide inside this class. And so when we construct it, we're basically going to start it. We're going to allocate the right size. We're going to take the current and point it at the first item, pulling from the head of the linked list. And then we're going to set the two methods, next and del, based on the address of the implementations of the functions that implement it. And then we're done, right? And so because we're inside of the map, and that's map iter, so this is what you get when you go map arrow iter, you get this code. Um, and so we're totally allowed to do everything private with map because, again, the developer of the map class is the same person or team that's developing map iter. And if we wanted to change head to, you know, X, we could because we would just go inside all our code and change it, but head is not exposed to the calling code, so they wouldn't notice that change. Again, that's, that's the key. At the moment the constructor is called, before the first call to next, this is what the map iter looks like. Current is pointing to the first item in our linked list. Then the while loop starts and it calls head. Now you'll notice that it's kind of got this weird thing where it grabs the current, and that's because current starts at 
we could have implemented this differently, but the way I did it was current is pointing at head, and I have to, for the return, it's got to return at the first call to next, I grab current, and then I advance current. So that at the moment that it returns, the return value is B equals 14, and current now points at 21, D equals 21, preparing for the next call to the next function. Okay, so then it comes in and retval grabs 21, and that's what we return, and then we advance to 19, and you can kind of see retval and current chase each other down this uh, linked list. So the re we return f equals 19, and then current points to null, and then we notice that current is null, and then we return null to tell our calling code that we are finished. So to start the iteration, to prime the iteration, we call the map object and say, hey, give me an iterator for the map. And we get that back, and we're going to store that in our variable iterator. Then we're going to start an infinite loop that says while one or while true, uh, cur equals iter next. Give me the next one, which the first time two is going to give me the first one. Then if I got a null, I'm done with the loop. Otherwise, I print the key and the value of the one I got, and then I go up and I iterate to the next one. Print it, up, print, up, print, up, print. Oop, I got a null, and then I delete the iterator. And this is super equivalent to what we do in Python, where we say x equal, give me the iterator for the dictionary x in the variable it. Then while true, we advance to the, the advanced next of it, otherwise give me false. If we got a false, we're done, and otherwise we printed it. So these two are very, very parallel. And you'll notice that Java and C++ don't do iterators the same thing, but I wrote this C code to mimic Python's way of doing this. So, it's been quite a long uh, journey. We really focused on abstraction and encapsulation, and we've done it with iterators. And all we've done now is we've laid the groundwork for multiple implementations of the map. We shouldn't have to change our main code anymore. We should be able to put a, we, we build a list map, a, a list map, and then we're going to build a hash map, and we're going to build a tree map. Those have increasing complexity and improved performance characteristics. And now you really are going to start seeing why we say have abstraction so that we can fool around underneath the abstraction and accomplish really cool things and get closer to what Python really does underneath of a dictionary implementation.